Hey everybody. Um, just a preview to the video. Um, I had a cyst removed about a week ago. Um, and that's the incision site and the staples. And my whole face is kind of bruised and a little bit swollen. So I just wanted to give you a background. No, this is not what I always look like. Um, for those who have are seeing the seeing me for the first time in this video. So um, let's start. This is going to be a difficult video for me. Um, but sometimes you have to go through difficult things to get better. Four years ago, on May 21st, 2018, I was raped. People don't like to say that word. I, I prefer to say sexually abused, sexually attacked. The R word is still really difficult for me even after four years. Um, I'm not gonna rehash what happened. I'm sure there's a video, a couple of videos on either one of my or both of my channels um, describing what happened in some detail, not all detail. Um, but I wanna talk more about um, the mind, what happens to the mind um, after you've been attacked. Um, the mind sometimes and the emotions in the heart take years and years and years to heal after, long after your body has healed from the physical attack. Your mind um, tries to make sense of everything. And at first I blamed God, I did. And some days I still do. And I don't wanna say that, but I guess the little girl in me still wants to know why. Even though the Lord has told me where there's an injustice, there is no answer. So remember that in life, where there's an injustice, there is no answer. The first thing that went to the wayside after I was attacked is my mind, my concentration. I would be in the middle of a sentence and I would just trail off and stop talking. I never finished my thought, my words. Um, I was depressed for a very long time, still loving the Lord with all of my heart. You can love the Lord with all your heart and still be angry and upset at God at the same time. I never knew that could happen. Now I do. Um, the Lord told me that he was holding my hand the whole time. Um, this whole time I have been so hard on myself. Sorry, that's another program just getting done. I've been so hard on myself. I've been so just stern and just so unrealistic with myself. And my friend Joanne has been saying that for a while, and I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, but today I got a breakthrough, and it was while I was talking to my therapist. And I do have a form of a mild PTSD. And I did not know this for the last four years. I had no clue. And she said that avoidance is a form, is avoidance comes with PTSD. Because ever since this, this attack happened, every time I am met with something that I'm too overwhelmed and emotional with, I want to flight or avoid. Um, I want to go away. I want to run away as quick as possible. I want to shut it down. 
I want to put all my feelings in a box and dig 5,000 feet and bury it, drop it off and just never look at it again. Um, I have been so unrealistic with myself. I've been saying for the last four years that I, that I want to go back to the person that I was before this happened. Just give me one second. Okay, so I had to do something. And I believe that I'm going to be a better version of that person in the coming future. You know, um, the Lord wants me to be a better version of that person. And what I mean by I want to be the person that I was before the attack is I had such a quirky, fun, amazing, I used to call myself hammy, um, sense of humor, just, just wonderful sense of humor. I'd love to create cute videos, especially on my Re Reborn channel. Um, and I just, I love to be so inventive and do videos and, and just, I was lighthearted. I wasn't always so down, so depressed. Yes, I had depression, but I was, I was, a, I was really a different person. And this attack has taken my heart and my mind and has just messed it up, <laughs> messed it up. And, um. I've, I've put too much unrealistic expectations on myself. You know, I, I kind of wanted an expiration date, you know, how they, they stamp it on a, a, a carton of milk, you know, an expiration date of when all this mourning was going to be over with. This constant anger I've had, I've just been, I've been dealing with crazy amounts of anger crazy amounts of bitterness, resentment, just a, a, just a sadness in my heart. And all while I've been dealing with that, I've been so hard on myself and unreasonable with myself instead of loving on myself and nurturing myself. You know, I'd say, Karen, how come, how come you can't get here? Like, like, I wanted to just have all that to be stopped and just arrive. You know what I mean? Like, when, when you go on a road trip or a vacation, there is a destination. You know, even if you're driving across the country, you know, you plan your pit stops, whatever. There's, there's a destination that you're trying to get to. There's something that you're aiming for. And for the past four years, I've been emotionally mentally and in my heart and my everything just trying to get to this place where I could just let it all go and start loving myself again and start trusting myself again and where I could start just being the better version of me that I was before the attack and I had a therapist appointment today over Zoom and I've done this video quite a few times, so I'm not even sure if I'm repeating myself at this point or not, but my therapist said, um, avoidance is part of PTSD. And when she said that, I felt literally that there had been a weight this heavy weight lifted off my shoulders. Like, like it's, it's not all me. The avoidance is not all Karen. It's, it's not just a personality trait. It is, it is from the illness of PTSD. And at that point, I felt validated that that these feelings are, are natural, that um, that the avoidance isn't just, I've been so hard on myself, so hard on myself because I, I wanna get better and I wanna feel better. 
and I want to stop mourning and I want to stop crying and I want to stop yelling and screaming and, and I want to stop being so hard on myself. So after we hung up a Zoom, I just started crying. And I said, Karen, I'm so sorry. Not only have I had to deal with all this pressure of what happened, but I put so much pressure on myself. And I said to myself, I forgive you. I forgive you for being so mean to yourself and for pushing myself so hard because I wanted to get to that destination where it would just all go away, where it would all just stop, where I would just have this one big breakthrough and it would just stop. And in this time, I have, um, I have just been shopping nonstop. I still pay my bills. Um, it's not, it's not bad. Like I can't control it. I can control it for the most part, for probably about 65, 70%. I can control it. Um, but I've still, but I, I have this hobby, the reborn hobby, I'd buy baby clothes and then stuff wouldn't, wouldn't work or I'd get sick of them and I'd sell them and I'd buy more and then I'd sell more and then I'd buy more and then I'd sell more. And um, I didn't realize until like this past month that I had been hoarding. And when I used to watch that, that show Hoarders, People would have like an emotional attachment to something that is so silly that I thought. And I'm like, these are just clothes. They're just baby clothes. They don't define me. I can't, when I pass away, I can't take them home to heaven with me. And I've been going through my wardrobe again. And I'm like, why can't I let it go? So I've turned my emotional pain my emotional hoarding, which was I've gained a lot of weight the last two years, and I'm not going to blame COVID. I'm not going to blame COVID because it's me who decides to buy the food that puts the food in my mouth, me that decides um, not being hard on myself, but, but, but at the same time, having to... Um, having to recognize and realize that you know, there is nobody else to blame. Um, and I've taken the hoarding, the physical hoarding, into food hoarding, into not having a lot of food in my house, but just eating. Because I was also abused when I was a kid. And I gained a lot of weight, thinking that if I was fat and ugly, that nobody would ever touch me again like that, that nobody would ever take advantage of me, nobody would ever abuse me, that if I was so, so just not a good looking person, that nobody would do that again. And with the help of my friend Joanne, and obviously God comes first, um, I've had a lot of prayer sessions that I've realized that I've been hoarding. Um, and that's a way, a form of protecting myself. Um, and I've been doing it again. I've been eating a lot of food again, thinking that if I do this, that if I get really good in fat, I mean, I don't think that like audibly, I, I haven't thought that like purposefully, I mean, not audibly, purposefully. But somewhere in my subconscious, I'm thinking, let's let's try this again because maybe you worked for a long time. Um, so I have
come to a few realizations in the last couple of months. And um, I'm going to start working in a healthy way with God's help to get rid of the stuff that I don't need, to sell the baby clothes I don't need, and to help me to stop buying and shopping when I could be sending more money to the ministry for, for people and in Africa, when I could be saving that money to visit a friend, saving that money to possibly move to, you know. Um, but I just really want to press into the point that when I got that validation that avoidance is part of PTSD, um, just a weight had been lifted, like, like it's not all on me, like it's not all my personality it's not all in my mind that it's not coming straight from from my mind from a personality characteristic standpoint that it's that it's from an illness caused by trauma that's what ptsd it's an illness caused by trauma whatever kind of trauma you've been through so it's um yeah I'm uh, I'm in a good place right right now, and uh, just don't push yourself, please. I know that we all want this pain, whatever you've gone through, even if it's not sexual abuse, it's physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse. We all want this pain to stop, but you can't. You can't force it to stop. Your mind and your heart have to go through it. I know that this is not this is not at all a biblical quote because I can't think of anything right now. I'm sorry, Lord. But it's like you gotta swim the moat in order to get to the castle. You know, it, it's you're going to have to traverse um, through some hard things in order to get healing from it. That we just can't wish it away. And we can't bury it. I've learned in life that I've been, I bury my feelings. And then I, then I internalize. And I, um... What's it called? It's not abuse, it's self. When you take things into yourself and onto yourself. So I just want to remind you that whatever you're going through, just allow yourself to cry. Allow yourself to be angry. Allow yourself to be mad. Allow yourself to feel whatever you're feeling. And know that, that these are just moments that are going to eventually pass. The Lord has taught me to do one thing when I get completely and overly overwhelmed. I'm about to go into a panic attack, an anxiety attack. The Lord tells me to say this over and over again, and it does help. The Lord says, tell, the Lord tells me that it's just a feeling, that it's just an emotion. It will pass. And it really, truly does help. Whatever you're going through right now, it is just a feeling. It's just an emotion that'll pass. Your feelings are validated. You feel the way you feel for a reason. Um, it's just how we, 
decide to cope with those feelings. And I've not been coping with those feelings very well. But I, I really believe, I've been telling my friend Joanne for like the last probably week, two weeks, that I feel this shift coming, this, this positive shift happening in my life. And I think that today's lesson, that today's um, appointment with my therapist was the start of that wonderful positive shift taking place. And enjoy the little things too. Just sitting on your couch on a nice day, or taking a walk in a in park, enjoying the sun, enjoying the sky, just I know that we all look forward to those big, beautiful, precious moments of whatever happiness we can get, but but those small moments are treasured too. Feeling accomplished is a wonderful thing. I feel like at the end of the day, when I go to sleep, if I feel like I've been productive that day and got a few of the things done that I wanted to get done, then it was a good day. Physically, mentally, emotionally, everything. So, I feel a, a new sense of relief. Just relief. That I don't have to be so hard on myself. That the process is what it is. You know, you put clothes in a washing machine and it's going to take however long it's going to take for the clothes to get done. You can't open it and push and prod and twist and turn and, and try to get it done faster than what the machine is going to get it done at. You know, it's this is a process, everybody. It's a process. And I know, believe me when I say I know that the process sometimes is grueling. The process is long and hard and arduous. But it's still a process. So forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for being so hard on yourself. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I am. Um, I don't know why the Lord is bringing this up to me, but I feel it in my heart to talk about it before I get off the video. At first, I was questioning whether it did happen because I don't know the person. Um, the person had broken into my apartment while I was sleeping. And because it was so traumatic in my brain, I cannot remember anything. I just barely, barely just small things that I remember. And my mind wanted me to tell myself that it didn't happen. It just, it didn't happen. It's a figment of your imagination, Karen. I think that it would have been much easier in the, in, the, in the time being to admit that it didn't happen. No, you're just, you know, it, it's, it was just a, a something. When we go through trauma, our brains can almost convince us anything just so that we won't have to go through the hurt. But it did happen. It did happen. And uh, I had to face that. This is more a video of helping those who have been through mental, physical, emotional, 
um, sexual, all kinds of abuse, even if it's not rape, it's still abuse. It still takes a toll on, on the body, on the mind, on the heart. And um, be easy on yourself. Um, there's a song out by Adele called Easy On Me that I really have been enjoying listening to lately. So um, I'm just going to pray. Father God, thank you. You put this on my heart today to talk about. I pray that it helps somebody while they're going through this, no matter if it was, it's fresh, the incident happened recently or if it happened many years ago, and the person still has not been able to heal, hasn't been able to, to come to grips, hasn't been able to move on. Father God, I just pray that your hand would be on them mightily and that you would help them to really grieve what happened. Take the time to grieve, to go through the process of grieving, through the process of everything, and help them to know that, number one, it was not their fault. No matter what situation they were in, no matter what they were wearing, no matter if they were drunk, high, no matter if they were yelling at the person, no, no matter what, in any situation, all across the board, when somebody abuses you, it's not your fault. Let them know that, Lord, that it's not their fault. And um, another thing, Lord, you recently told me, um, I saw this on a piece of paper and I knew that I wrote it down because you either told me or I learned it from somewhere. You cannot flourish when you're being stifled. Sometimes you have to get yourself out of a situation before you can learn, before you can move on to heal. Because while you're trying to deal with old wounds, getting new wounds um, won't help. Um, you can't deal with your old ones because new ones keep on happening. It's fresh every day, every week, every month, whatever it is. Um, sometimes you have to get out of the situation that you're in. It's scary as it is. God will provide them. So thank you, Father God. In your mighty name, we pray. Amen. Take care of yourselves.